Welcome again to Scatter in the Light Ministries, scriptures twisted out of context. We want to focus on the state of the dead, what happens when one dies. And the scripture people tend to refer to is 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 8, which says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. But before we go any further, please pause for a moment of prayer. O oh God, which art in heaven, if there is never a time we need you, we need you now. So through the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask you to interpret your truth to our mind. And may we understand the truth pertaining to the state of the dead. And give us overcoming power. So we live in a state of readiness that if we should die right now, it will be well with our soul. And please forgive us of our sins. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. So here we are seeing Paul is saying he would rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. But is he talking about death? If you should read 1 Corinthians 12, you would see where the scriptures refers to the body as the church. So from verses 1 onward, you'll recognize the context of this scripture. It is not talking about death, so to speak, but it is talking about the body as the church. And Paul is here saying that he would rather be absent from the church to be in the presence of God. But I want to draw your attention to verse 4 of the said chapter. Verse 4 says, For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life mortality might be swallowed up of life. When will mortality be swallowed up of life? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15 and we'll find the answer there starting at verse 51 onwards. And the Bible says, the Holy Bible, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, we shall not all die, but what? We shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So here, this scripture is referring to the second coming of Christ. So, not all of us will die, but when Jesus comes the second time, the trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Here it goes on to say in verse 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So mortal means we are subject to death. Immortality means we cannot die. So when will mortality be swallowed up with life at the second coming of God. So it goes on to say, verse 54, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, That is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So death is swallowed up in victory. So mortality will be swallowed up with life, immortality. And this is at the second coming of Christ. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? So here we are seeing that Jesus will come a second time, the trumpet will sound, and the dead shall be raised. So if when one dies to be absent from the body and to be with the Lord, why would Jesus be coming back to sound the trumpet to raise the dead? Hmm, that doesn't make sense. Let me give you another scripture. In 1 Thessalonians uh, 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. And verse... We pick up at verse uh, 13 onwards. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 
13 onwards, and it says, But I would not have you ignorant, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, concerning them which die, okay? That he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So Paul is here speaking to the Thessalonians. Don't sorrow when your loved one die as if you don't have any hope because something is going to happen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, the second coming, shall not prevent them which are asleep. So death is like sleep. The Bible classifies death here as sleep. For the Lord himself, verse 16, shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Wow. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So at the second coming of Christ, the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ shall be resurrected. So Paul could never be saying, when we die, we go directly in the presence of God. No, no, no. And guess what? I believe that if there's anyone who deserves to die here on earth and go directly in the presence of God. That should have been Christ. So let us go to St. John chapter 19 and find out what actually took place at the death and the burial and the resurrection of Christ. So I'm just saying if anybody should be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, that should be Jesus Christ himself. But let us find out what the Bible says when Jesus died. So St. John 19, and we'll pick up at verse 32, which says, Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first, first thief, and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. Jumping over to verse 40, it says, then took they the body of Jesus and wounded in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. So here we are seeing Jesus was dead. He was buried. Now we need to identify if he was resurrected or if when he was dead and buried, he went directly to heaven. Let us find that out. So we just jump over to the following chapter, which is St. John chapter 20. And we'll pick up at verse 1. Verse 1 says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Read further on, you'll recognize that this is referring directly to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the stone was rolled away. Jesus was resurrected. But the verse I really want to focus on here is verse 17, which says, when Jesus saw Mary, Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascendeth to my Father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. So Jesus died, he was buried, and afterwards he was resurrected. But what did he say to Mary? Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. So was Jesus absent from his body and present with the Lord? No, no, no. Jesus remained in the grave after his death. And he waited until his appointed time for his resurrection. And I can show you that scripture in the book of Job. Go with me to Job which is before the book of Psalms. And we want to look at chapter four, 14. Job chapter 14. 
So was Jesus absent from the body and present with the Lord? No, no, no. Hear what Job says. What happens when one dies? Job chapter 14 and verse 13 which says, O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Look at verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? This is a question Job is asking. So if a man die, shall he live again? Yes. But when? Job says what? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. So friends, when one die, they, he or she remains in the grave and wait until the appointed time for the change to come. And that will happen at the resurrection. So clearly Paul was not saying that to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. No, no, no. He was saying to be absent from the church, you would rather to be in the presence of God. So this is a scripture that is normally twisted out of context. And another thing people tend to say is that when they die, they will come back as an animal. There's no such record in the scripture. As a matter of fact, people will even tell you when you die, the spirit roam. All these are errors, friends. And the scriptures are given to us to guide us in paths of truth. So, in other words, for us to actually find out what took place when the first man was created, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. So, go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And here the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So how was man created? Man was formed from the dust of the ground. He was dead until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Yes, God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Solve this equation with me. Body plus breath equals a living soul. We don't have a soul. We become a living soul after God breathed that breath of life within us. So body minus breath equals death let me repeat for emphasis body plus breath equals a living soul so we are alive body minus breath equals death so what really happened at death go with me to chapter the third chapter of genesis and we'll focus on verse 19 because here we are now seen after sin entered. So this was what God said to Adam. Verse 19 of the third chapter of Genesis says, In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for thus, thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. So in Romans 6 and verse 23 we are told, for the wages of sin is what? Is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. So when we obey sin or become slaves of sin, it will eventually lead to death. And after death, we go back to the dust and the spirit goes back to God. We need a scripture for that. Turn with me to Ecclesiastic chapter 12 and verse 7. So what happened when one died? The body goes back to the earth because we are dust and the spirit goes back to God. So Ecclesiastic chapter 12 and verse 7, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. 
So remember, Adam was formed from the dust. He was dead until the Spirit of God or the breath of God was breathed into his nostril. And I can prove that to you by reading Job chapter 27. Job chapter 27 and verse 3. Job chapter 27 and verse 3. What does the Bible say? Friends, the Bible is of no private interpretation. Let scripture interpret scripture. Let the Bible interpret itself. Job 27 and verse 3 says, All the while my breath was in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostril. So here Job refers to the Spirit of God and the breath. They are the same. So all the while my breath was in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostril. So what happened when one died? The body goes back to dust, to the earth. And the breath of life, the Spirit, goes back to God who gave it. But why is this? In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, we are told that we will have to give an account for all the deeds done in this body. So therefore, we will be resurrected and we'll have to face the judgment to answer to how we have treated this body, which is the, actually the temple of God. And you can read other scriptures like Revelation chapter 20, where you see the sea will give up the dead and will have to stand before the judgment because the books were open. And only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life will be saved in God's eternal kingdom. So friends, sin actually leads to death let me just share a scripture with you in 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 in, in james chapter one james chapter one wherein sin leads to death james chapter one and we we'll pick up at verse 12 it says blessed is the man and blessed sorry blessed is the man that endure temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. Then when loss hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin and sin. When it is finished, bring it forth death. So the wages of sin is death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So here we are seeing that the wages of sin is death. So we spoke about the breath of God being in our nostrils. So if you should read Psalms 150, Psalms 150 and verse 6. You know what that scripture says? It says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So therefore, God knows we cannot praise him when we are dead. And therefore, we need to praise God now while we are alive and well and in the right frame of mind. Psalms 115 and verse 17 says what? The dead... Praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. So therefore, we need to praise God now while we are alive and well. And friends, let us not delay but accept Christ today. We are not sure of tomorrow. Tomorrow is promised to no man. We are sure about now. So let us give Jesus our hearts now and praise him now while we are alive, while we are breathing. Because when we die, we cannot praise God. Let us look at Psalm 30. And verse 9. Psalms 30 and verse 9. What does the scripture say? What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? So friends, we cannot praise God when we are dead. We have to praise God now while we are living. And as Psalms 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that have breath Praise the Lord. How many days are in the week? Seven days are in the week. And therefore, if we live throughout that week, 
That simply means we are breathing. We have breath for seven days for that entire week. So therefore, we should not only be praising God on the seventh day of the week, but we should be praising God seven days for each week that we live. So let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So praises to God should be a lifestyle and not a once in a while or a once per week thing. So let everything that have breath praise the Lord because when we die, we cannot praise God. Look at Psalms 146 verses 3 and 4. Psalms 146 verses 3 and 4. It says here, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man. And the Son of Man here is a common S. So we're talking about human beings. In whom there is no help. Look at verse 4. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thought perish. So the very day one die, the thought cease to exist. So there is no such thing as dopey or um, people coming back to haunt us. These are manifested through the power of Satan. These are demons who impersonate those who die to deceive us. But let us not be fooled anymore after today, after watching this video. May God help you to understand that death is but a sleep. And as a matter of fact, we could walk into any cemetery and not be afraid. I don't know why people are afraid to go into a cemetery because those that are in there are dead. They cannot harm you. We should be, if we are going to be fearful, we should be fearful of those who are alive. Those are the people who can hurt you. But the dead cannot hurt you. Turn with me to Ezekiel, I mean, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 5. You know what that scripture says? For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. And look at verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. Mm. Friends, my appeal to you today is to seek God while you are alive and well. Don't even wait until you are on your sickbed because some of us might never get up. So let us make use of the opportunity now to seek God while we are alive and well. I want to share another scripture with you here in St. John chapter 10 and verse 10. But the last section of it which says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, abundantly. In, 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 term, in, in, in other words, Jesus is saying that he came to give us eternal life, immortal life, immortality. And if we should look at 1 Timothy 6, 14 to 16, we'll see where the scripture says that Jesus is our sovereign ruler. He is the king of kings who alone have immortality. So God alone is immortal, friends. So don't let no one fool you that when, 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 when we die, we live on or we come back as some animals or something. No, that is not true. This is a scripture that people twist out of context. So let us be enlightening, friends. So let me show you something here. Back to St. John 10 and verse 10. The first part which says, The thief cometh not to, but what? To, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So friends, the devil wants to destroy you and I. And one of the ways he does that is to deceive us pertaining to what is truth in the word of God. So John 3 and verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if we don't accept Christ. We are doomed. There is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. But through the name Jesus Christ. So friends, let us seek Jesus now while we are alive. Because when we die, we cannot praise God. So may this simple, short presentation enlighten you through the power of God's Spirit. That we will understand the truth of what takes place. 
when one die, and that we, when we die, we remain in the grave until the resurrection. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this truth, the truth of your word pertaining to the state of the dead. May this message go forward to enlighten others, and so we can be prepared for your coming. May we not be deceived anymore, but may we seek to understand your truth through the power of your Holy Spirit. Guide us throughout today and forevermore, and thank you for hearing and answering our prayer, and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, and tell thee thanks. Amen.